unmute. Do this. And then let it hey, focus. It's Courtney. <gasps> it's Blair Butler. Hello. We're here together at Lowe's. <laughs> Gosh, I don't think we've ever done this before. No. You and me, you haven't been on the show yet. But finally, hey. Blair Butler, our comic book expert and guru mega writer of Attack of the Show, Courtney is joining Kraft, us. Manga expert. Just together, we're like this. I we know. Create, like, we have a like a. Team or we're like we're like a two a Voltron. We've got two Voltron legs. No arms yet, but we're working Give on it. Give us time. Morgan can be like the video game she arm. Could. Morgan and Jessica Chobot. Yeah. Two video game and then arms. We need a head. Candace. There we go. Perfect. We're done. Perfect. Magic. So uh, today, <laughs> today we're here to talk about uh, Comic Con and comic books. So any questions that you guys have for Blair about yeah. Comic Con? Or comic books, feel free to uh, ask them in our chat room. Yeah. Now, if we if we miss them, just ask them again, and then we'll we'll get to them eventually. So, um, let's first talk about uh, what you're going to be doing at Comic Con because you but you have a lot of stuff going on. Oh, so, so yeah. what, what should they know about? What should they look forward to? Well, I thankfully get to cover uh, comics uh, from one side of the floor to the other. If you guys are going to be in San Diego, go to Artist Alley because Artist Alley is amazing. You can get original artwork really cheap. Last year. Um, this guy, Cliff Rathburn, who does all the inks for the Robert Kirkman books, like Invincible and Walking Dead, he made all the members of the G4 staff, we bought commissioned zombie sketches oh, from nice. him. It was awesome. Uh, one of our, Jeremy from Jeremy's Dragon Corner got a Wolverine zombie. Uh, I got like a Beta Ray Bill zombie. Another guy got a Tron zombie. It was awesome. And it was like maybe 40 bucks a sketch and it was it was amazing like his art is really cool so artist alley you can buy original art from your favorite comics you can com get commissions it's really cool man and you never know who you'll find there exactly uh who, who jeff who darrow was, was at WonderCon in san francisco if you guys don't know who jeff darrow is he's this amazingly detailed artist who's who's famous for um some collaborations he did with frank miller he did hard boiled and he recently did um shaolin cowboy that the wachowski brothers were were kind of like um, publishing for him and just like amazing artwork he has he's famous for doing the Shaolin cowboy fighting a giant zombie shark with a double-sided chainsaw that's that's pretty impressive it's amazing bow staff that chainsaw bow staff it's great yeah, yeah. and and it's, it's always great discovering like new people there yes you know you look at stuff you, you're like oh i've never heard of your work before but then right. hey you know look at this cool this cool print or this cool book and you never yeah. know what you'll discover it's awesome i i saw i saw a question uh they, someone was asking me about the the dc reboot obviously um for those of you that aren't aware dc comics is relaunching their entire line 52 totally new titles um in uh september and I'm cautiously optimistic. Look, I, I'm very bummed out that one of my favorite, actually, let's be honest, my favorite DC series, Secret Six, uh, is going away. For the time being, the writer Gail Simone has sort of alluded to the fact that maybe they'll be back. Um, but we're going to get some kind of cool new takes on classic characters, some really good creators like um, Mike Costa, who did, uh, or Costa, who did um, G.I. Joe Cobra, which was like the HBO adults only version of Cobra, is doing a title. I heard so. About that. That should be really groovy. Um, you know, the Batwoman comic is coming back with J.H. Williams III doing the artwork and some of the writing. So there should be some interesting stuff. And uh, the Superman, Grant Morrison is doing Superman. And if you have seen the cover art of uh, Superman in jeans, you know that it is not your grandma's Superman or your mom's Superman or even Superman yeah. probably we grew up with. So it'll be really interesting. Are you looking forward to it? Do you think it's going to be a good kind of Superman? Uh, I, I mean, Grant Morrison has written arguably the greatest Superman story of all time, All-Star Superman, okay. so I'm extremely hopeful, yes. Let's see, life is like a box of ammo, and, well, that's true. <laughs> Let's see, okay, so now I'm, if you see me looking down, it's because I'm looking at the... We're looking at, at your the, chat uh, questions, yes. guys, so... so uh, do, do male superheroes need to wear pants to be heroes? They kind of already are all are wearing pants though, except for Namor in like really weird freakish occurrences when he wears his uh, his chainmail speedo, <laughs> his green like chainmail leggings speedo. though. Yeah, like, well now he's got leggings. Yeah, you don't really see the speedo look anymore yeah. on the guy superheroes. So I would say that yes, they do wear pants now. Yes. Uh, uh, do you think there's gonna be more video game news at Comic Con than in previous yes. years? Yes. Tons of video game news. Obviously, mm -hmm. Arkham City, which I loved. Uh, Batman: Arkham Asylum. It's like possibly one of the it is, definitely I think, Batman arguably the best, the best Batman game, probably mm -hmm. the best superhero, like, comic book adaptation game um, that's been made in, uh, that, I mean, that I can remember. Mm -hmm. uh, so Arkham City is going to have a huge presence from what I've heard. Um, I think uh, DC, DC Online, mm -hmm. um, Darkness 2, there are a mm -hmm. lot of, like, comic book video game properties that are going to be there, so it'll be interesting to see 
what what happens. Yeah. Now, I know that Comic-Con has really evolved, especially just within the last couple of years. So, like, right. what are some of the changes that you've seen from Comic-Con, from, um, like, say, five years ago, even until now? Well, it the movie presence kind of reached... Uh, reached its zenith uh, last year, if hopefully I'm using that word correctly. Yes. Uh, apex. And, uh, yeah. yeah, the apex. Uh, so it hit it last year uh, to the point that somebody got stabbed in the eye with a pencil in Hall H. Um, this year, there is a little less movie emphasis, which is great because it means that there's going to be a ton of comic book stuff there. There's also a, a lot of TV shows. One thing that I'm really looking forward to, I'm kind of this year is going to be my Lock and Key pilgrimage. I love the comic book series Lock and Key. And this year, um, they have a limited edition key. Like they, There's a guy that actually makes all the keys from Lock and Key in real life. I think it's like Skeleton Key Yeah, yeah didn't Studios. you show that on Fresh Ink? Yeah, we had it on mm-hmm. Fresh Ink. They're crazy. It looks like, like he literally perfectly replicates the drawings. It's really cool. There's going to be a couple limited edition keys there. Um, also, the creators of Black and Key, Joe Hill, and uh, the amazing artist um, Gabe Rodriguez are going to be there. So I'm hoping to see those guys. Um, and then another thing that I'm super psyched about, um, the Walt Simonson Thor Omnibus just came out from Marvel, which is great. Uh, so they're doing an artist edition that's only going to be at Comic-Con, and it's all his original black and white art, like the Bristol boards and stuff. It's going to be really cool. So uh, I'm I'm psyched about that, and obviously all the other stuff. Uh, let's see. Oh, you got into Kirkman's, Kirkman's Invincible. Invincible. Um, other great comics from well-known creators. Let's see. Okay, so again, Lock and Key, um, Joe, the Joe Hill comic. Uh, I really like um, Cobra, G.I. Joe Cobra, which is great. Um, Gail Simone's Secret Six. Yes, it's coming to an end, but you can buy the trades. Um, they're really affordable, and it's just crazy. It's like... The worst characters, like D-list supervillains that should not be cool, and she makes them terrifying. Uh, so that stuff is great. Um, have you ever read Jim Starlin's The Weird? If so, what did you think? I have not read... You know what? I have not read a lot of Jim Starlin. I will be totally mm-hmm. honest. I think that some of that happened during the... Uh, I took I took a... <laughs> me to... Oh, Keanu Reeves. When was that? that? I appreciate that. That may have been a long time ago, because mm-hmm. I'm like, I did, but it's been a while. Um... <laughs> Let's see. You met the guy behind Lock and Key. Oh yeah, it's a it it's a great series. Um, trying to think of other really good series that that people should be tapping into. I actually really like um, Thunder Agents right now, which is Nick Spencer, who's like a big indie creator. Um, and Scalped is amazing. Oh my god, Scalped at Vertigo is phenomenal. If you guys haven't gotten a chance to read that, it is. Um, What's about? Super mature. It's about um, it's Dare about it's about uh, an undercover FBI agent on a, a Native American reservation where they sell a lot of a lot of meth. Okay. And uh, it's like The Sopranos, uh, but in North Dakota, it's great. Or South Dakota. Now, uh, someone's asking uh, at Comcon, are you signing autographs? Uh, yes, I am. Well, allow me to refer to this paper. Uh, yes, I'm signing um, Friday at 11:30 a.m. and Saturday at 11:30 a.m. all by myself. Friday is when. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but there's uh, this crazy poster they're doing with, like, everybody on it. And they're doing a group signing, so, like, you can get everyone all at once. And then I'm doing an individual signing on 11.30 at Saturday. Uh, Do we know where that is? Is that a G4 I think it's at the G4 booth. Okay. So you guys have to come to the G4 booth for these things. Let's see. Uh, Let's see. All right, let's see. Oh, when starting a career as a crime fighter, how important is health insurance? Hugely important yes. uh, because the Joker gas, mm-hmm. you need uh, a lot of time to rest and recuperate a lot of shots after being exposed to that. Also, yeah. uh, let's be honest, when you have a costume and you're crime fighting with no pants, mm-hmm. chafing, injuries, the legs, you need yeah. health insurance. Yes, and get it before you get injured so you don't get blacklisted from all the insurance companies yes. like Jackie Chan is. So Absolutely. Get it on the internet like, uh, uh, someone's see. asking if, earlier if you like Deadpool. Oh, Deadpool. Uh, I do like Deadpool. Uh, the Deadpool Max series is coming back, which is kind of cool. Um, Deadpool is one of those, like, really bizarre, goofy characters. I have to be honest, I really like dark, dark comics, and Deadpool is, like, dark but funny. Um, and uh, weirdly, my sense of humor is kind of out of whack, but I do like Deadpool, yes. Well, that's uh, why you work with us. Exactly, I know. <laughs> um, let's see. <laughs> Wolverine is the 90s, but Deadpool is the 2010s. I understand, yeah. yes. Uh, uh, someone's asking, did you like Batman Hush? Do you think he's a good villain for Batman? For uh, Batman's Hush? Hush? Well, he, you know, he pops back up in um, Gates of Gotham, actually, Hush. Uh, and I love Gates of Gotham right now. That's actually, speaking of great comics flying under the radar that you should check out, 
um, this Gates, Gates of Gotham is like Batman with a steampunk angle. It's really, really cool, and it's by Scott Snyder, who did um, American Vampire, and he's been doing a great run on Detective. I actually have really... When I, when I heard that uh, they were going to have, um, you know, Dick Grayson as Batman, I was a little... Uh, little I was like, eh, I don't know if that's going to work, and then Scott Snyder's detective stuff is phenomenal. Like, I'm loving that more than traditional Batman, so it's very surprising. You never know. Uh, never let's know. see. Uh, Sir Helsing is... I'm assuming you mean The Killing Joke. Is The Killing Joke the best Batman comic collection? Um, the Killing Joke The Killing Joke is very controversial, actually, interestingly enough. First off, the art is absolutely magnificent. Um, uh, it, that comic has really polarized uh, critics and a lot of feminists for years. Um, I find it to be the most chilling and disturbing Batman comic ever written uh, because of what happens, obviously, to uh, Batwoman slash Barbara Gordon slash Oracle in it. Um, it's it's super it's super intense um, visually it's pretty incredible don't worry the killing joke I do that all the time I it's it's the it's the Joker gas it gets us all um, sorry I'm re responding to a to a little I am um, let's see speaking of dark humor oh the goon yes the goon is great someone asked about the goon uh, the goon is it comes out from Dark Horse Eric Powell writes it the best goon volume in my opinion is the goon uh, Chinatown. I think it's called in the mystery of Mr. Wicker. I can't remember the, the full subtitle, but the goon Chinatown is amazing. And the art will blow your eyeballs out of your head. And then it's awkward to read your eyeballs are on the floor. Uh, <laughs> someone was asking a, an extremely important question earlier. Yes. Who would win in a fight, Batman or Spider-Man? In your expert opinion. Batman. Sorry. That one, sorry, I don't Peter even Parker. have to think about that much. Look, <laughs> Peter Parker's great. It's just, he's Batman. Yeah. He, you know, he's got a kryptonite ring for Superman. I'm sure Spider-Man, like, he'd, he'd neutralize. I saw a question there that I was going to ask. Up. Uh, that I was going to answer. Someone was asking about Carbon Gray, right? Yes. Yeah, Carbon, Carbon Gray, Gray Image, Image Comics. Comics. Carbon Gray is visually one of, it's beautiful. Um, Carbon Gray has, like, this crazy sort of, um, like, Prussian era. Like, it's basically, like, Prussian military, you know, circa, like, the early 1900s um, crossed with like crazy like manga, but like airbrushed. It's no, no, completely for, for, amazing. For the stupid ones here like me, is that is that like an art style or is that a, a series? Um, it's Carbon a, Gray. oh Carbon Gray is a series with oh, okay. some really crazy okay. art, and it's got like this really like kind of World War One vibe. Mm -hmm. Um, but then the art is like really beautifully painted, and um, it's kind of amazing. If you love manga, I think you would totally dig Carbon Gray. Uh, let's see. All right, I gotta keep reading these. Um, let's see. <laughs> Batman does not have uh, the flying advantage. You are correct. How uncreepy does a fan? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, yeah, let's see. Black yeah. suit Spider Man. Uh, what about black suit Spider Man? Um, I guess you just want guilty... your opinion on it. <laughs> oh, black suit Spider Man. I like the black suit. Um, you know. I like the traditional suit. I think the traditional suit is more fun for artists to draw, and that's why they keep going back to it. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, what's a good comic to start with if you want to get into Batman? I will tell you it is Batman Year One by Frank Miller and David Mazzucchelli. It is phenomenal. Uh, it's from the 80s, and it's perfect. Uh, Ultimate Comics run from Marvel. How much longer does it have? Interesting question. Some of those, uh, that question may be answered somewhat at this year's Comic-Con. Um, it's getting a little bit of a reboot, but man, I I don't want to, I know something, and I don't want to accidentally drop a spoiler, but there are some really cool creative teams uh, coming out with the Ultimate relaunch. Um, and I think they've announced it, but I don't want to mess up in case they haven't, uh, that I'm actually very excited about. Nope. So, yeah. Weren't you teasing that you have some important announcement coming out on Thursday? Yes. This is going to be on Attack of the Show? It should be on Attack of the Show Thursday. Okay. I don't want to make Tune promises in. in case like something crazy happens and, and we don't get to say mm -hmm. anything. But yes, this Thursday, and I'm very nervous and very excited. So I have no idea what it crossed. is, and she's not going to tell me. No, so you guys are just going to have to tune in. Yeah. But, uh, but yes, let's see. Uh, favorite bagel on G4, free bagel Thursday, egg bagel, yeah. egg bagel, all the way. Egg bagel, if they had the strawberry cream cheese, egg bagel, strawberry cream cheese, but they, mm -hmm. there's been a strawberry cream cheese drought. It is gone. It's my hair. Makes me glad I'm not into cream cheese, so I don't yeah. have to fight other people for it. Let's see. Let's um, see. Let me keep looking. WTF <laughs> moment. Best WTF Comic -Con. moment from Comic-Con. This one's good. Uh, so last year, um, so the, if you've ever been backstage, so there's Comic-Con, right? There's a huge, massive convention hall. 
behind Comic-Con is this smaller, like, concrete bunker that runs parallel to the back of the hall. And um, we were trying to get uh, get from one end of the hall to the other really, really fast. And uh, I was with Olivia, and uh, they pulled up, like, this golf cart. And we hopped on the golf cart. So, like, Olivia's on the front of the golf cart. I'm on the back of the golf cart. And we're zipping through the backstage. And as we are, <laughs> we pass uh, Michael Chiklis from The Shield, Stan Lee, uh, the guy yeah. that played Thor, Chris Hemsworth, and, like, a bunch of other people. But, like, we're in this golf cart going really fast. And they're all trying to get out of our way. And it was extremely surreal. And I felt like I was in uh, that movie In the Line of Fire. where they're like, <laughs> it, was, it was very surreal, but it was amazing. What's it like for you? I mean, being at Comic Con, a lot of people know who you are. I mean, you, you get to it's, meet your fans. Oh yeah, people it, are so really good? nice. Like no, people are super nice. Honestly, awesome. people are really nice um, and really cool. And you get to meet like people. You know, the best thing is when people come up and say, "Oh, I didn't know about the." You know, for example, like The Walking Dead, but I started reading it because we kept talking about it, and it was I really liked it. You know, when people say, "Hey, you mentioned this comic, and I picked it up, and I actually like it." That's that's really awesome. It's um, really satisfying. Let's see here. Uh, I'm looking. Surfer. Silver Surfer. It's your favorite Mar- superhero. Uh, oh, okay. So Silver Surfer. Someone was asking about the Silver Surfer in the Marvel Universe. Um, so, yeah, the Silver Surfer, I mean, he he hasn't had a ton of changes, but I would say that he has had some memorable moments. Um, obviously, his cameo in Planet Hulk, uh, the comic book series, is awesome. Like, it's super awesome, but... My favorite recent Silver Surfer story was actually written, I think, by J. Michael Straczynski, and it's called Silver Surfer Requiem. Uh, And it's like the ultimate, literally the ultimate Silver Surfer story. It's the end of Silver Surfer, um, and it's great. If you haven't read it, it's beautiful. The art is all painted, um, I want to say by Isad Ribic, but I don't want to be wrong about that. It's beautiful. It's really great. Um... Let's see. Someone oh my asking. gosh, it's skipping up so okay, fast. Well, someone was asking a question. I figured if anyone can answer this, you might. Let's see. Uh, it was, uh, where can they get a copy of the original Superman Blue, Superman Red story? You mean like after the 90s when he died? Um, there's a big anthology collection of Death of Superman that kind of has everything leading up to the death and everything after, but it's really expensive. I would honestly suggest either your local comic book shop or eBay. Um, both of which you can probably find it really reasonably because the Superman Blue, Superman Red, uh, now uh, in the light of day and uh, with 2020 vision, is not as beloved a storyline. Um, so I think you know you can totally check it out. Let's see. That was a good question there. Um, do you have any advice for someone going to Comic Con for the first time? Yes. Okay. Uh, bring hand sanitizer. And I say that, like, just because there's so many people picking stuff up and everything Mm -hmm. else, like, there are a lot of germs, and everyone leaves Comic-Con and comes down with the nerd flu. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets sick every year. People lose their voice. So bring hand sanitizer. It's not a bad call. Um, I suggest bringing, this is going to, I'm a nerd, but uh, a backpack's not actually a bad idea, because if you're you're picking up comics and art, also bring a poster tube. Like, if you're going down there to buy original art, Bring a poster tube. I know I know. nobody wants to be the guy walking around with a poster tube. Leave it in your hotel room. Just have it in your car. So if you do buy something huge, you can get your poster tube and, like, safely transport the priceless art that you just bought uh, back to your house. I'm practical. I don't know what yeah. to say. As long as you're not wearing a fanny pack, it's okay. Yeah. But backpacks are cool. Um, go to Artist Alley for sure. Yeah. That's, that's a huge recommendation. The best stuff is there and hidden there. Um, and there's usually, sometimes the swag runs are crazy. I will tell you that this year, one of the, the number one things on my, my, my list of something I want to get, uh, there's a limited edition Swamp Thing that I believe Mattel is putting out, and it's awesome. It's really, really cool. It's from their DC Direct line, maybe. But it's not DC Direct, but they have a DC line. Anyway, the Swamp Thing limited edition Comic-Con figure is redonkulous, and it's Arti- it's got articulation. I realize this is very nerdy and toy fair, but it's got articulation, but it's got, like, a rubber skin on the outside, so you can't see the joints. I'm just saying, it's Alec Holland, and he looks great. So, yeah. Um, let's see here. Any other exclusive figures? Yeah, there's a Sentinel from Hasbro that's huge. It's almost as big as that Galactus from last year, which is really, really cool. Um, oh, and... tipping in bright green is not a good idea. Let's see Um, here. Uh, Out of comics for almost a decade. Uh, Yes, Walking Dead will get you back into comics. Um, Lock and Key, also very good. I know I keep saying a lot of the same titles, but it's because they're that good. 
I also love Northlanders, which is a Viking comic that's ending soon, um, but it's really, really good. <laughs> There's a guy spamming us with Call of Duty, I think. Yeah, well, now he's going to get to He's annoying. Oh. Um, goodbye. Call of Duty is fun. Uh, I just get murdered by 12 year olds. So, you know, um, um was asking, do you ever watch uh, motion comics? What do you uh, think of those? I mean, that's kind of like a new, yeah, new fangled technology, new, new fangled technology. Um, I think some of them are really cool. I mean, it's fun to have the voice acting and, uh, I watched, I think the Black Panther one, the Spider Woman one. I mean, I love, um, the John Cassidy for the, um, Avengers or not Avengers, sorry, Astonishing X-Men with Joss Whedon. Um, the thing is, I read all the comics, so I have not probably seen as many of the motion comics because I've already read the, the source material. Um, but, uh, God, I like, whoever wrote that gets a huge thumbs up for the, they were like, apparently that guy likes fish. God, CD. Okay. It was good. Um, let's see. Uh, looking forward to any of the Marvel anime. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to all the Marvel anime, but I have to be honest, Blade. I cannot wait for Blade. Um, I'm so curious to see who they get for the voice. I haven't heard anything yet. I haven't heard anything yet either. Uh, and if I had, yeah, I'm glad I don't know, because I would probably accidentally say it. Uh, oh, hey. so, you know what, people, <laughs> um, I actually watched the Watchmen motion comic, and it is one of the better motion comics. Uh, let's see, anybody else can play the Joker after Heath Ledger's performance? You know, it's going to be a really hard act to follow. Um, Joseph Gordon-Levitt looks an awful lot like Heath Ledger. I'm just saying. Um, but yeah, you know, I I agree that that is, that is going to be an almost impossible act to follow. The weird thing is, though, that traditionally Batman without the Joker is kind of not the, like, it's like, it's like a superhero is kind of only as awesome as their best villain. And he is really the best bad guy from Batman's arsenal so it's going to be weird to not have him in the film universe well he might maybe they'll take a break from it for a couple of years maybe yeah. come back to it later let's see lady blair do you think more tv shows that have been canceled should get new life in comics like buffy uh and dollhouse yeah i do actually i think i think it's a really cool way for creators to uh finish what they started for example i'd love to see a carnival comic uh to wrap that up because uh that show hbo show Left everybody in the lurch. It would have been nice to finish it up that way. Um, Who would you want to see do it? The the creator do it, and then with <laughs> with like um, an artist who can really kind of capture that style. Uh, awesome. Let's see. Um, let's see. What do you think about? Oh, Blue Monday, Slice of Life comics like Blue. Mon I love Slice of Life. Local by um, Brian Wood and Ryan Kelly is an amazing Slice of Life, and just mm -hmm. so great. Optic Nerve by Adrian Tomine, I believe. Or Tomine or Tomin. I mess up his last name all the time. Yeah. Also great. Yes, I'm a huge fan of Gears of War. Gears Gator. I'm guessing you are too. Uh, I really like Gears of War. Uh, Cliffy's a fun guy. I've hung out with him a couple times. He's just really I love nice. Him on Twitter. Yeah, He's Cliffy on Twitter, on Twitter is amazing. Mm -hmm. yes. um, yeah, well, I, I, I like I like Gears. I'm psyched for three. Mm -hmm. And two had uh, two had a very memorable. Memorably disturbing cutscene. If no one's played it, I won't. I mean, I'm sure lots of you played it, but I won't spoil it. But oh you know my God, one. it's so disturbing. The scene with the wife. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Now, some people here might not know that you used to write for X Play, right? Yes, like long I before did. Attack the Show. Back in the day. So you're a gamer. Yes. What's some of your favorite stuff? Uh, okay, so obviously I'm a Fallout nerd. Um, waiting for the newest Fallout uh, New Vegas expansion pack. I've played the other two. Uh, was not not super thrilled with the last expansion pack, which was a lot of uh, wide open wandering, um, but without a lot of narrative payoff. In fact, here's what's weird. The best part of the, um, was it Honest Hearts? Yeah, that was yeah. the new one. The Honest Hearts expansion pack is if you find all the survivalist computers and then you find his body, the story that he tells in text form is gut-wrenching. It is, it'll really kill you. Um, I also, let's see, I'm trying to think, I just, I just, uh, started playing, because I'm late to everything, I just played Fable 3, which weirdly, uh, I liked Fable 2 better, because the interactions, um, with the NPCs are really, really smooth in Fable 2, and you can engage, like, ten people at once, and in Fable 3, you have to actually, kind of cut to, a, a different, you have to go enter into and back out of those oh. scenes, which, like, another, uh, label of, de of detachment, but Fable 2 is amazing. Um, and obviously Portal 2, I played the crap out of, I almost dropped the S-Bomb, hey, but wait. I don't know if no, it's No, it's safe. okay, it's the internet. Just, oh, is it? Please no spoilers, because I haven't Oh, you haven't played? Alright, we'll stop yeah. talking about okay. Portal. So actually, someone had a really good question okay. uh, for you up here. Yeah. Asking about, um, do you think iPad and digital comics will have an effect on paper comics? 
yes. pineapple com- some comics only being digital like where yeah like where do you see things going with digital comics oh digital man comics? so this is kind of a loaded question i think there are a lot of great um providers for digital comics you know whether it's individual publishers or places like um, Graphically or Comixology, you know, there are a lot of huge options out there um, for people looking to try comics out online. My hope is this, that people who don't go to comic book stores, that people who haven't read comics since the 90s uh, because it got turned off by variant covers and events and everything else, um, will see the internet as a way to sample comics for free, to try first issues out for free, and maybe find something they like and um, buy those comics, the subsequent issues, and that that'll be a new way to engage new readers. You know, people who want to read something for free, like Warren Ellis's Freak Angels. If you read Freak Angels for free on your iPad, you're probably going to go, I want to read something else by this guy because it's really good. Um, The one thing that's tough is that uh, piracy on on those iPads um, is really rampant. And it's tough because I know people are financially strapped right now, and there are a lot of people that are like, I'm just going to torrent it. Um, or they but they promise the, they'll, they'll buy it later, right? And then you know that. But it's it is really tough on creators, especially like the independent folks who who don't make any money um, up front and who usually actually pay money to to you know help get a project mm-hmm. forward um, and published, uh, and then maybe can on the back end actually you know not continue to put out comics independently because. Um, there's, there's sort of not enough revenue for that, but you know, that gets into like a a lot of crazy sticky issues. I mean, the, the really interesting thing I think is that people like, uh, those of you probably reading comics now myself are going to continue to go to comic book stores and buy physical comics because we like having the comics in our hand. If anything, I really am optimistic that the iPad will be a way for new readers who don't want to go to a comic store or don't have one nearby. They can get that new issue of you know, uh, Batman or Detective Comics or Batwoman digitally and give it a shot. So fingers crossed on that. Any form of reading is good. You know, actually there are people out there who say, you know, comic books are a waste of time, they're junk, those it's people bad for kids. Jerks. Yeah, what is, yeah. I was going to say, what do you have to say to those people? But yeah, I, I, I think you say, just said to it. Uh, you guys are totally missing the point. Some of the greatest yeah. literature coming out right now is in graphic novel mm-hmm. form. You know, you, you look at amazing stuff like A Serious Polyp or Fun Home. I mean, just incredible works of art, you know. Um, let's see. He uh, says, reading is good. All right. Chronicle 125. What I find stupid is the fact that Bane is the main villain in the next Batman film. Yes, but I must say he's being played by Tom Hardy, who is a pretty phenomenal actor. He was in a really disturbing movie that I can't remember the title, where he had a handlebar mustache and his head was Bronson. He was in a crazy movie called Bronson that is, oh my gosh. So if he can bring that kind of intensity to Bane, we might actually like a bad guy in a luchador mask. Also, I have a hard time believing that Christopher Nolan will actually put him in a luchador mask. So, right, well, it's 5.30, which means we have to wrap things up. Uh, uh, but I there are a couple more minutes. Okay, we'll go for well, a few more minutes. Five more. Five okay, more. and then don't, we got to tell these guys about uh, what else we're doing at Comic-Con oh, before yeah, we go. Absolutely. So a few more questions. Uh, Ambush Bug, yeah, I have, all the, I have all the old issues. I really enjoyed Ambush Bug. Uh, am I psyched for the Captain America movie? Yes, I am. <laughs> and initially I was really nervous, and then I saw the trailers that really play up the fact that, you know, Steve Rogers... Um, maybe physically frail, but has like this amazing spirit. They had me. They had me with the when they threw the grenade and he jumped on the grenade and the tear ran down my face and I pre-ordered all my tickets. Yep, they got me. Uh, do you think they will make a movie out of any R.A. Salvatore books? I hope so. Uh, Dark Knight is taping in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, man. Gotham grimness in Pittsburgh. Uh, let's see. Oh. Some people are very, very are not optimistic about Captain America. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. Uh, let's see. Um, Wii U controller is my own personal pit boy. Yes, obviously. I love Fallout. Um, let's see. What other, uh, what other comic book conventions are you going to be at this year? So oh, yeah. New York Comic Con. Yeah. Absolutely, I will be there. Um, and hopefully, uh, yes. I can't say any more about it, but yes, New York Comic Con. Uh, fingers crossed with with a with a plus. So we'll we'll talk about that um, maybe after Thursday. Did I see any of the Walking Dead two uh, set picks? I saw a couple of zombie picks, um, but hopefully we're gonna get to talk to Robert Kirkman this year, San Diego Comic Con, which will be really cool. Um, yes, Pittsburgh skyline is definitely unique. Someone, uh, someone this whole time keeps asking Camelot three thousand. Oh yes, the comic book. like all the whole time. Is so. it, is, is that the uh, is that's the comic book series, right? The, uh, uh, that's all from I can the, of all the old UK 
the UK publishers, like back when Alan Moore was doing Judge Dredd and stuff, right? I, I might be blanking, so I apologize. Uh, but I think that's it and not, it's a, it's a comic. I'm very tired. I apologize. Uh, let's see. Will there ever be a return to slasher school? Yes, I hope so. Let's all cross our fingers on that. That was really funny. Do I ever fear being buried alive by all the comic books I own? Funny story, tried to clean my cubicle, uh, crawled under my desk, found a severed Captain America head from a Captain America oh statue. That was really disturbing, and um, I have had comics fall off of my desk. And I cleaned my desk because someone <laughs> from one of the other uh, networks in the building uh, walked by my desk and literally went, ew. And I was like, I know, it's covered in comics, that's what Aww. I do. Uh, let's see. Fresh Ink is an extended podcast. We do do Fresh Ink online at uh, mm -hmm. g42.com slash Fresh Ink. Yeah, it's every um, Friday, right? Yeah, every Friday. Mm -hmm. And hopefully uh, going forward, we're going to maybe try some new stuff with that um, and uh, maybe maybe get some, some more going on with that. So, again, that fingers crossed on that. I do need bins like in Mall Rats. I have, um, I have boxes. I have short boxes, but there aren't enough, and they've overflowed. Yeah. And all the excess she yeah. ends up putting on the free stuff table. And then, you know, about every couple of weeks, Claire yeah. will send out this email that says, free comics, and that, like, everyone yeah. just goes rushing to get all the stuff. It's yeah. true. That's, that's life here at Will Park. there ever be a live fresh ink? We used to do live fresh inks on Attack of the Show all mm -hmm. the time. But I think the executive decision was just that it was, and also it's really fun to go out to comic book shops and shoot because they have great stuff. They have great, yeah. you know, busts and maquettes and statues and action figures. Um, so we have been shooting them in the field, but if there's ever an opportunity to do one live and they want to, I'm totally game for that. Um, let's see. What did I, th what did I think of the Green Lantern movie? Um, I thought that that final scene with Sinestro, uh, I, if they make a second movie, I will be very excited because I found Sinestro very compelling. I love a good compelling villain. Sinestro is a great villain. It's 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 no I'm, it's not a spoiler no alert. Spoiler. You know he's in the movie because of the trailers. I'm sorry. S yeah. S G S Trunks or Strunks S S G Strunks. I'm sorry. Hey you. That's... Do you think they're ready to make an adventure movie? They are making an adventure movie. Joss Whedon mm -hmm. is directing it right now in Arizona, I believe. Uh, love. Joss yes. Um, biggest change I'd like to see made at Comic Con. Man, I wish there were more space for people to get around. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Evil Dead reboot or four. Bruce Campbell. We gotta have Bruce Campbell. There's yeah. no Evil Dead without Bruce Campbell well, fighting he, his own hand. Isn't he involved with it? Yeah. Uh, so. he, I hope so, yeah. Let's see. Powers. Oh, Powers TV series. So I love Powers, Brian, Brian Michael Vendis, and Michael Avon Eoming. Whose name I can't okay. say. So Sorry. I say it like Dr. Evil. Avon Eoming. Um, their comic is great. If you haven't read Powers, another great comic out there um, about cops investigating uh, superhuman crimes. Uh, starts with the Who Killed Retro Girl storyline, which is really cool. Um, I am, uh, am I excited it's coming to TV? Oh my god, yes. Uh, the casting, um, I think I read that it's Lucy Punch and Ka the guy from, is, is it the guy from Friday Night Lights? Or I can't remember who plays. I don't know. Um, you know, I know she plays Dina Pilgrim. I, Pilgrim. I can't remember who plays Christian Walker, but I'm just excited to, I'm just excited to see that show. And FX goes pretty, uh, pretty hard into the R category, so I think it'll be great because that is definitely an adult comic. Yes. Do they have all the superheroes in the Avengers? They have a lot of them. They don't have the Wasp, as far as I know. Um, next Resident Evil film. Funny story. I saw uh, the most recent Resident Evil film in 3D, and while the film itself is arguably not so great in 3D. Uh, quarters exploded out of a shotgun through a zombie's head and into my face. And it was amazing. Wow. Good times. That's uh, how you do 3D, people. <laughs> let's see. Good comics to start with in Marvel, DC Universe, and overall. Best comic to start with in Marvel, say you've seen the first Iron Man movie, pick up Matt Fraction, and uh, I believe his name is Salvador La Roca's uh, new Iron Man series, um, The First Trade. I cannot remember what it's called, but start with the first trade in that series. It is the best thing at Marvel. DC, again, pick up that Secret Six. It's great. Um, I love, absolutely love, it came out two years ago, I think, uh, the Batwoman um, series with J.H. Williams III's amazing art. Um, let's see. Uh, overall opinion in 3D and films. I'm not a fan. I'm really not a fan. That being said, I did... Uh, I feel like Avatar and Resident Evil, whatever it was, Afterlife or Explosions in Your Face, um, were not great films, but were made very enjoyable by the 3D. 
Um, however, in every other case, like I saw Thor in 2D, um, and there are a couple other movies that were in both uh, 3D and 2D. I wish I had seen them in 2D because the, those late conversions do not look great. Um, the Harry Potter troll in the bathroom scene in the last Resident Evil. Yeah, the Harry Potter troll is from Resident Evil Five, oh, the, the video that. game. Uh, he is he's in the first the first boss battle in that game, uh, and uh, why he's there they never explain. But it's Resident Evil. It's Capcom. It's just fun. Yeah, because you can. <laughs> At Comic Con, do you feel like saying to Kevin and Candace, "Yo, I got this"? When it's a comic book question, yo. I got this. Yes, I do. I do feel like that. That is that is very amusing. Uh, Marvel Civil War is definitely in graphic novel form. Steve McNiven's art is glorious. Uh, I also, for Marvel, I love Old Man Logan, which is an alternate universe tale. It's got written by Mark Miller, who wrote Kick Ass. Art by Steve McNiven. Steve McNiven's art is amazing. Dexter Vines, I think, does the ink and the colors, and his stuff looks great. Uh, or I think, actually, it might be someone else says color. My bad. Um, but, yeah, it's really, really great. Uh, should Twihards <laughs> be shot? They shouldn't be shot because, honestly, as Twilight, I'm not a fan of Twilight. I'm, I'm going to be honest. Uh, there is a Comic-Con this year, a Twilight fan fiction panel, which amazed me, like an entire panel. Wow. But here's the thing about Twilight. So um, Twilight is getting vampires, which arguably have some geekery involved. Uh, in, and it's introducing them to a new audience. Do I like Twilight? I'll be honest. I don't like Twilight. But uh, I do appreciate that it's opening up fantastical stuff to maybe people who never gave fantasy a try before. Anything and, that, I mean, like, fantasy, like, we like vampire before. fantasy, not like sexy fantasy, because yeah. well, I don't think there's any anything kind of sexy fantasy. about Twilight. No, not about Twilight, but I think vampires uh, are sexy. But like we were saying before, you know, anything that gets you reading. Yeah. Anything that gets you re to read is a good thing. Let's see. Uh, do you think comics are getting too full of spa splash pages and pinups? I don't think so. I think um, it really depends. Uh, for example, if you read the Hulk comics um, that Ed McGinnis is drawing, there are a ton of splash pages in there, and for a Hulk comic, it totally works. It works <laughs> to have just giant splash page after splash page, because really, it's a big green guy punching a big red guy in the face. I feel like other people are pretty um, economical with the spl splash pages, and especially now that most of the major publishers have cut their page count down to 20 pages. People can't do splash pages anymore because there's they need room to tell the story. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to see splash pages going crazy, that Death of Superman issue was all splash pages back in 19, I think, 93. It's nuts. It's all, uh, it, it's super crazy. Uh, let's see, whatever gets more people in sci-fi, right? Mm -hmm. I know, it's like... Uh, my thoughts on Image Comics, I love them. Um, they're creator-owned. They let people take artistic and creative risks. Um, and I, 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 th I think it's wonderful that it exists. They've given us The Walking Dead. Um, they've given us Jonathan Hickman, uh, Nick Spencer. Some of the best creators working at Marvel and DC right now came up through Image. Um, and the rest came through Vertigo and, and Oni. So it's, it's really... It's really cool. Um, so, actually, Evan, let me ask you a question. For yes. people who want to write to write and draw comics, like yeah. where's a good what's a good publisher for them to start at? You know, because you can't usually just go straight no, to no, the top no. of Marvel. You, you like. I mean, they, if you want to write and draw comics, I mean, as far as starting with a publisher, what you want to do is go to like a Comic Con and have a portfolio mm -hmm. review with people from Marvel, people from DC, and people from smaller independent publishers. And if all those people review your stuff and reject it, then you know. Go back to the drawing board and either try and publish independently. Um, a couple years ago, actually, and I think you can find it online. Um, I did an interview with this guy named Joey Andrade who did a comic called The Descendant. Uh, I think it's The, the Descendants. Um, if I'm messing that up, I apologize. He self-published out of a place in Texas. He paid $2,000 and had, I think, a couple hundred copies of his first issue printed in color. And since then, people have made, like, fan films about it. But, yeah, he published no, you know, he, he kind of got shot down places. He went, he put his own money up and self-published. Um, and there is an interview with him hey, where he goes step-by-step step through what you should do Hi, to get set up. And it's it's a great article. He was awesome. Oops, let's scrolling down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, Intern at Marvel. Yes, absolutely, Intern at DC. It is dedication. Uh, let's see. Image, I think no, Pitt no, no, is, uh, I, I feel like Pitt got a relaunch recently. It was, I, I want to say it was at one of the imprints, like yeah, Top Cow. Um, let's see. 
It is super cheap in black and white and kinkos. You are absolutely right, oh, ocular and nervosa. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, the black and white yeah. and kinkos. I don't fine there, but yeah. no. Oh, sorry. Yeah, but okay, it's. I mean, again, it. it's how you get it out there. And look, with the advent of digital comics, there's a wider and cheaper distribution window yes. out there for people. You just sort of have to find um, someone who's going to be able to put your art in the framework of the <laughs> iPad. But again, if you if you can't find a publisher, there are definitely ways to self distribute. And in the internet age. It's become much, much easier. A lot of people are, are doing stuff on their websites now, which is pretty cool. That's true. Um, Any interest in writing your own comic? No writer. comment. Oh. Uh, That's I mean, interesting. Yeah, we'll see. Again, I, I cannot comment at this time. Well, look how uh, she's getting. Six-figure drawings are considered a comic, yes. Yeah, I've look seen at Order of Stick. Yeah. And, and what's it? Uh, X K C D. Yeah, oh. I'm you guys know what I'm talking yeah. about. You know what it is. Oh, uh, let's see. Where can Ugh. we see you doing stand-up? Great question. Um, hopefully, I'm going to be doing it a lot more soon. Um, it's it's Here's the deal. Going into Comic-Con, we're so busy. We're, like, setting up, like, I'm setting up interviews and coverage and pulling images uh, for the editors, and we're still working on the live daily show and shooting fresh inks and stuff. Um, it's been a little crazy, but hopefully, uh, yes, I am a joker. Uh, I got a joker. Yay. Smile. And I got a goofy eye. <laughs> um, let's see. Any advice for doing stand-up when you're not good at public speaking? Yes. Here's the best advice I can give for anyone who I wants to be a stand-up com comedian. Go to the worst open mic you've ever been to. Go to an open mic that is terrible and watch. Sadly, people have a tough time there. And some people will do well, but a lot of people will do badly. And after you see someone suffer, you're like, I either you think, I can do better than this, or, oh, my God, I never want that to happen to me. You will decide very quickly whether you want to do yes. stand-up or not. Learn from um, people's mistakes. And also going up in a room where there's no expectation of getting a laugh. Like when you're in a room where you're like, no one is going to laugh at anybody, it can be weirdly liberating to just go up there and talk because you know there's nothing risk because no one's going to laugh anyway. Um, let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. Let's do one or two more questions. Okay. So we should, we're going um, way over. Yes. Let's see. Uh... Worst comic book movie, movie adaptation. Oh, I've where ever to seen. begin? There are there are a lot. I'm trying to think. I mean, look the of those final Batman movies under with the bat nipples were a little much. Those yeah. those kind of killed me. Uh, they hurt me deeply. Also, uh, I was very sad because the Electra movie, uh, not so much to do with the, the Electra. It kind of could have been a generic revenge movie for anyway. Yeah. Iceman. Chronic Chronic One Twenty Five hates Watchmen. I did not hate Watchmen. I, there were there were things about Watchmen that I very very much enjoyed. Fantastic Four Two had some. That was that was yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Anything new with Ghost Rider or Blade? Um, well, obviously Blade is going to be on Marvel Anime, which I'm psyched about. Um, Blade's been popping up in the Ultimate Comics a lot, and obviously I think a bit in the regular Marvel Universe because they have their big vampire storyline. Um, let's see here. Yeah, Mr. Freeze, played by Arnold, if you can ever see the montage of uh, our, our former governor saying, cold, freeze, cold, for like five minutes all looped together, it's amazing. Um, yeah, Iceman, Mr. Freeze, it's okay, it's an easy mistake to make. Uh, we, all get, we all get sleepy, because it's, you know, it's late. ice to meet you, good, that was <laughs> a good saying. Uh, let's see, oh, thank you very much, TR... G. Hudson. TRG Hudson, thank you. Uh, let's see. That is an interesting question, Rai Guy, and uh, we will see when that issue comes out. Uh, that will, we shall see. Um, it may be. Uh, let's see. Um, all right, we'll we'll wrap it up. Yeah. 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 Sorry, you guys. Thank you so much. You are all very nice to send me questions. Well, you know, you can come back anytime you want. We do this every day, and if you just want to come yeah. out and hang and talk about comic books, you, I can. I can talk about comics. It. So, so uh, again, one last time, where can they find you at Comic-Con? Oh, uh, you can find us at the, okay, a couple places. Um, obviously, uh, I will be Friday um, at the 1130 group signing with the tech of the show, which I believe is at the G4 booth, but might be in the autograph hall. I'll let you know as soon as I find out. Um, and follow her on Twitter at the Blair Butler. And that's yes, good at the Blair to Butler on Twitter. Thank mm -hmm. you. At the booth. At the booth? At the booth? Yes. Yeah. Okay, we okay. got confirmation. At and the booth. Saturday, 1130, at the booth. I will be there signing, uh, and uh, yes. Awesome. Thanks, you guys. I really appreciate it. You were very kind. Thank mm -hmm. you for the, the nice comments. Blair, totally thank you so much it. for coming by. It's my pleasure, Courtney. Fun.
Quit crafting, buddy. All right, everyone. We're gonna, again. we're gonna wrap it up, and then I will tell you one last time. Okay. Oh, where's uh, this? Oh, just some uh, some other stuff we have going on at Comic Con. Okay. We also have um, Thursday at seven, which is uh, the X Play All Access from Comic Con. It's a one hour live show, and Friday at seven Eastern, we have AOTS Attacks Comic Con for a whole live hour. Attacks. And then Saturday at four PM Eastern, Comic Con Live for four hours. That's this many. So much Comic Con, and she will be all over the sink. So be sure to yes. tune into G Four cool for Comic Con, and of course, I'm Attack of the Show. So, all right, guys, we're gonna yes. call tonight. Watch Thank Attack you. of the Show on Thursday. Yes, and then join us back here tomorrow yes. at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific for more G Four chat. Okay.